Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. In this video, we're going to be going over rope physics. So let's just jump straight in and um, give it a shot. So the first thing we're going to need is a couple of sprites. The first sprite you're going to need is something to hold the rope, so we're just going to call this holder. Uh, I'm just going to make this a uh, 16 by 16 circle. Uh, nothing special for this video, just uh, showing you guys the process. The second thing we're going to need, oh, center that sprite. Don't forget that and select OK. The second thing we're going to need is a sprite for our rope. Now we won't actually use this to represent the rope because, uh, as you know, in some other of the in some of the other rope tutorials, the sprites uh, they have chunky edges and they sometimes don't connect properly and it just doesn't look right. So we're just going to use this for debugging, really. So I'm just going to call this rope and I'm going to center that also. And this is just going to be a four pixel wide by sixteen pixel tall. Uh, image and it can be of whatever you like. I'm just going to make it a gray square. So center that sprite and select OK. Uh, and we're basically going to start off. So let's uh, create a room. Uh, 640 by 480 is fine. I'm just going to call this RM rope. I'm going to set the speed of this room to 60. So that's for 60 frames per second. It also gives us, I think it gives us a 30 frame per second update on the physics engine. And we're going to tick the box here room is physics world. We also need to increase the gravity because the default 10 usually isn't enough for most games. So I'm going to set this to 50 and I'm going to tick the, tick the box. Uh, let's create two objects. I'm going to create the first object is going to be called rope, sorry, obj rope holder. I'm going to give it the holder sprite. And select the user's physics button here and set the shape to circle. Make sure you click modify collision shape and then press OK because Game Maker doesn't do this for you automatically and set the density to zero. The second object we're going to create is called object rope so obj underscore rope select the rope sprite tick the user's physics box and we're going to make this one a circle as well. We'll set the density to 0.1 because it doesn't need to be too heavy uh, because we also have extra gravity in the room as well so we don't need it to be too heavy uh, and modify collision shape and just make sure that it covers the actual rope sprite that you have there. So that's basically it for creating the objects that we need. I'm going to place a an instance of the rope holder inside of the room. I'm just going to place it in this uh, corner here. Oh, sorry, in the center of the screen. Now let's begin the code. The code for this is actually fairly simple. Uh, what I'm going to do is in the create event, I'm just going to add a script. And basically we're going to start off. The first thing we need to say is offset underscore wire equals zero. So what this means is we're, when we haven't created anything yet, um, it's going to be created at the zero position. We're going to say host equals self. So this is going to be the object that hosts the rope. We're also going to say oops, next underscore rope equals instance create. And that's going to be at x x and y plus offset y, so 0, but if we did change this it would increase. And it's going to be object rope test. Oops, sorry, not object rope test, just object rope. The next thing we need to do is create a physics joint to bind that piece of rope that we just created to the host object, which is the object rope holder. So I'm going to create attach, so I'm just going to call this attach equals physics joint distance create Oops, the capital. now this one here takes a, a bunch of properties the first two are the two instances that you want to join together so the first instance is going to be host the second instance is going to be next rope now the world anchor x uh, y and then world anchor 2x and 2y these are the positions in the world that these two objects are linked to each other at so we're just going to use the center of each object so for the first one, we're going to use host.x, host.y. And then for the second position, we're going to use next rope.x, next rope.y. And for these collide, this final property is collide instances. We set that to false because we don't want them to collide with each other. Once you've done that, we can go with next underscore rope. and say parent equals other dot id. So what this means is basically we want to tell this piece of rope 
who its parent is and the reason we're doing that is because we're going to use a draw command to actually draw the line to connect between the two of them. By doing this uh, parenting system we're basically eliminating the need to use sprites and therefore the, the image will look uh, much smoother. There won't be any uh, breaks in the rope and things like that. So let's quickly uh, jump out of this and jump into our rope and basically in our rope we're going to do some similar things. The first thing we need to do is in our create event we need to say parent equals negative one because when they're created they don't have a parent. Parent equals negative one. So that's the first thing we need to do. The second thing we need to do is jump into the draw event. So I'm going to add an event of type draw and I'm going to add a uh, event inside, uh, sorry, a uh, code segment inside of this. The first command is just going to say if parent not equals negative one. So basically if the parent has been set to anything we want to draw a line from its current position to the parent's position. So I'm just going to say draw line width x and y, so its current position, to its parent's x and its parent y. I'm going to make it a width of 3 pixels. The final thing I'm going to do is say physics draw debug. And this is just so we can see what's happening inside of Game Maker's physics engine. So if we quickly run the script, you should see a single segment of rope. Actually, you won't see anything because that single segment of rope is actually underneath the holder, but that's fine for the moment. Uh, let's jump back into our rope holder event uh, for create. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the repeat command. So basically, we want to create a few more pieces of rope and tie them to each other. So let's say repeat. Oops. Repeat. Uh, let's repeat this 10 times. So what the repeat command does is obviously it repeats the same chunk of code 10 times over. So what we're going to do in here is say offset y plus equals 1. So we're going to move the offset down by 1 pixel. We say last rope equals next rope. So basically what this line here is saying, next rope is the first rope. Uh, so when this script's ex executing it goes sequentially, so it goes from top down it goes, uh, and it creates next rope here does all this stuff down here, then we get to this repeat. So last rope currently does, hasn't been set to anything, but next rope has. So what we want to do is we want to store next rope in last rope. So we say last rope equals next rope. Then on the line below, we can say next rope. So now we can reset next rope to be actually the next rope, since we have a reference to what the last rope now is. And say instance create. This one's going to be at x and y and it's going to be y plus offset underscore y. So basically we've moved down by one pixel and we're creating a new instance of the rope. And it's going to be object rope. Then the next thing we need to do is create a, a link or an attachment between this rope and the last rope. So we're going to call this one link. It's going to be the same as attach up here, but we're just going to call this one link because we've already used the word attach. We don't want to overwrite that variable because we need that maybe later. I'm going to say link equals physics joint distance create. It's going to be uh, between last last rope and next rope. So they're the two objects that we want to link together. And we want to link them at last rope dot x, last rope dot y. Uh, we're going to go next rope dot x and next rope dot y. So we want to link them basically to each other at their x and y coordinates. And again, we don't want them to collide with each other because we're going to handle this elsewhere. So that's the link set. Now we say with next rope and we say parent equals other dot last rope this time rather than other dot id. So basically these two sec sections of code are almost identical but we need to do the first one ourselves because we need to actually link this one with the holding object rather than a piece of dynamically generated rope. So then we come down into this repeat function here where we create 10 instances of the rope object and we link them to each other using this parent equals, uh, sorry, using this link and then also the parent equals other dot last rope. So let's give that a shot and see what that looks like. So what you'll see is uh, it's a bit heavy, we still have some numbers to play with, but a bunch of instances have been spawned and they now connect with each other. 
so that's working good. Um, the next thing we need to do is actually set some values. So just under this attach at the top here, we need to say physics joint uh, set value. Now the joint we're using is attach, so let's say that. The field we're going to be working with is the dampening ratio. So PHY joint damp, uh, and it should come up, dampening ratio. The value we're going to give that is 1. We're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to use PHY joint, and this one is going to be frequency. We're going to set this one to 10. Now, what these two actual variables do, um, you can look this up in the Game Maker manual. Basically, this is the dampening, so it adjusts the springiness of the rope, and this one here is the frequency in which the rope updates per, st per step, I think it is. So, per frame. Not per frame, sorry, per room speed. So this is going to be running at one-tenth the room speed, I think. Um, but yeah, look these two uh, these two values here up in the Game Maker manual and you'll find some, some more in-depth information about those. But they're going to be the values that we use for now. We're also going to copy this and place this just underneath the link here. And we're going to use the same values, except this time we replace attach with the word link. So what you'll see now is these objects, with these values set, uh, the rope has got some uh, springiness to it, so it's going to hold on to itself. And you'll see that it's holding on to itself here inside of the, uh, just underneath the holder object. So the next thing we need to do is just uh, come into our holder object. I'm going to add a begin step event. Sorry, an end step event. Sorry, my bad. Uh, step, end step. And inside of that, we're just going to add some uh, basic movement code. So we're just going to say PHY position underscore X, oh, P O S I T I O N <laughs> equals, <coughs> excuse me, mouse X, and we'll do the same for Y. So PHY position Y equals mouse Y. So basically, this allows us to move that holder object around with our mouse. Now, if we run this, what you should see is we have some, some rope. We've created some very springy rope, and you can see, basically, you can actually see the way that the draw line function works here. It actually gives us a little bit more, uh, more of a clean rope as it expands out and contracts. You can use this as for a whip. You can use this for, you know, whatever you like in your game. Um, it's actually uh, pretty cool the way it works. So what we'll do is we'll jump back into our rope holder object, and I'll just show you guys a couple of things you can do with this rope. So. If I increase this number from 10 to say 30, we'd obviously get more rope segments, which you'll see here. And yeah, so you can see these here basically. Um, so this is the rope. It, it looks pretty cool. It's a little bit springy. You can adjust the springiness using those dampening values and uh, the frequency, the frequency that the rope updates as well. So what I'll do just to show you guys is I'll also just go into our draw event here. And I'm going to get rid of this draw debug. And what that will show you guys is how the rope actually looks without the debug commands on it. So you see, we've got some very we've got very smooth gameplay here. I mean, this is using Game Maker's inbuilt uh, physics engine, so we don't really have to worry too much about performance. But what you'll notice is that the line is very clear. There's no breaks in the lines because we're not using sprites. Um, and like I said, the springiness, you can adjust that with the dampening values. I kind of like the way that this uh, springs about. gets a little bit longer as you stretch it. It, it gives it like that uh, nylon sort of feel, you know, as it expands as you stretch it. Uh, so some other things you can do with this. If we were to, say, drop this down to five segments and increase the gap between each by, say, 16 pixels, what you'll see is we can get a line that's quite long but if you guys are looking for performance like say on a mobile or a mobile phone version of your game you can use a smaller um, a smaller value with a sorry a smaller number of uh, rope segments but with a larger offset between them and the the physics system in this the that command we're using physics joint distance create uh, it respects the distance between the two objects so if this was say 64 pixels the minimum that those two objects could be close, sorry, the minimum those two objects could be together is 64 pixels. So you can see that in this example here where each segment is at least a minimum of 64 pixels apart. So some other stuff we can do with this. 
it's going to drop this back down to 1 and I'm going to increase this to say 30. Something else that you'll notice uh, which is quite cool is that this is obviously integrated with the physics system so if I create a new sprite here I'm just going to make this 64 by 64 fill it with some dark color uh, center it uh, actually no, I'm going to keep it not centered top left top left I'm just going to call this sprite floor we'll create another object we'll call this object floor and tick the user's physics box density set that to zero and collision shape use box now just make sure oh sorry we need to actually set the sprite and then just jump into collision box here and make sure that that matches up perfectly once that's done you can jump into your room and just create a few of those floor objects and what I'll do is I'll just create like a base floor down here like that and I'll put a couple of stacks on top of it just to show you guys some cool cool stuff that you can do with this there we go I'll leave a little gap there and I'll make this go back up there we go I'm not I'm not actually trying to make a map here or anything guys I just wanted to show you you know some cool stuff that you can do with this physics system Right, so obviously that's going to give us some floor. It's not going to collide with anything yet because we need to set those values up. But because each segment of rope is a physics object, we can actually say add a collision event with that floor. You could do this with the player. You could do this with, you know, with whatever you want. I'm just going to add an event here, say do this, just so the game maker um, respects this event as a valid event. If you don't add an action inside of it, it will strip it out when it compiles. So now these rope segments are respecting collisions with this floor object and you'll see we can uh, drag the rope across it like that um, it's not super close because we're using the circle but you can actually you can improve that collision detection by using um, a smaller circle or a square so if I change this to a box and bring these values here in like that and just make make it match that uh, the sprite that we gave it you'll be able to see that these now get much closer can get much closer to those walls there. The other thing you can do with this, uh, this will probably be the last thing for this tutorial, is make the rope collide with itself. So if you add another uh, collision event and this time make it with object rope and just put that do this event inside of object rope collision, the rope will actually collide with itself now so you're able to make little piles and stacks and things like that. So you can see that the rope has got itself into a little knot there. You can tie it into a knot, you can stack it up on the floor pull it through the floor you can you know do whatever you like with it it will respect collisions with itself there you go so you can tie it in a little knot like that um, yeah you can tie it in knots you can do whatever you want you can throw those around you could make a little game here where you have to make like a lasso and throw it really it depends what you guys want to do with it um yeah so this has been a tutorial on rope physics please like the video subscribe to my youtube channel share this video uh, follow me on Twitter and anything else that's social media that you feel like doing, please feel free to do it. Thank you guys for watching.